Hello, here I am. Now, I'm going to be speaking to you today about uh, a recent chapter that has been written for the uh, Manual of Revolution produced by the Jewish Bundes Diaspora Movement, of which I am the revolutionary chairman. And I have uh, called this chapter uh, Cleavage Points subtitled Social Orders and Class. And there has to be a differentiation made, first of all, between social orders and uh, what has been called in classical Marxism economic orders. Now, um, most people are familiar with the economic orders such as slavery, feudalism, capitalism, socialism. These are economic orders. And they are presented in uh, classical Marxist theory as being a linear progression in historical development. This is called historical materialism. From an materialist methodology of a classical scientific method. However, as should be known, in 1905 there was a Einsteinian revolution which did away with classical scientific method of the linear progression such as this. This is also called periodization. <laughs> and uh, the problem being that it just, you know, doesn't happen like that, you know, in reality. The actuality of the situation, as exemplified in the 1917 Russian Revolution, is that uh, the uh, stage of the uh, capitalist economic order was, was overcome. Overcome or bypassed or whatever, you know, uh, as in postulated, uh, as it is postulated in theory of the permanent revolution, which was a uh, theory developed, you know, from the 19th century on through until it became codified, you know, by the uh, experience of the Russian Revolution when the uh, Bolshevik Party came over to uh, adopt the uh, socialist program rather than the Menshevik program of sustaining the uh, capitalist bourgeois liberal state in its development of a capitalist order, in spite of it being a socialist organization. So, social orders are the what is often thought of as caste orders, or the caste system, as in feudalism, you know, where there was castes, in which the family to into which you were born remained the economic order to which you were assigned uh, in terms of being uh, either a slave or peasant or, or aristocrat with the landed property owners in a, on a permanent basis. In India we still have such a caste order as exemplified in the uh, differentiation made between the biological uh, origins of uh, various nationalities within India. Now, social orders are yet again different. And we have to step outside of classical Marxism in order to theorize about social orders. And it is necessary to do so because we have social orders which persist in the advanced capitalist uh, nation states of Europe, North America, South America, and uh, as the nation state is propagated in the Orient as well by uh, imperialist intervention, in particular the Sykes-Picot Agreement of 1922, which divided up the, um, the Western Orient, which is called the Near East or the Middle East, uh, which are false and uh, colonialist uh, projections. Uh, and uh, those uh, states that were carved up or carved into the uh, Western Orient uh, are now in uh, full blown crises and will continue to do so until they uh, found themselves as independent uh, social entities and not uh, those entities dominated by a bourgeois class put into place by the colonialist system in what is called neo-colonialism. Okay, so now we're getting into the crux of the matter. Now, these social orders are 
uh, what are oftentimes termed nationalities, because uh, people of different national origins are confined, you know, to given, you know, economic and social space by uh, social discrimination, by economic discrimination, uh, which uh, are generic to racism and anti-Semitism. Jewish people are a social order, although uh, Jewish people have collectively um, uh, helped themselves to advance in their collective uh, economic uh, foundation uh, within the capitalist, advanced capitalist states. Nonetheless, uh, Jewish people remain a, uh, identified and discriminated against and oppressed national minority within the capitalist Christian nation states. Uh, what this means is, for instance, the United States of America, you know, the, um, the, the V's, the money, you know, like is stamped with the words, you know, like, in God we trust. Now, which God do you think they're talking about? They're talking about the Christian God, which is called oftentimes the Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh, this, of course, is exclusionary to Jewish people. Since the time of the Roman Empire in 326, when Christianity was declared to be the state religion, and it was uh, theorized uh, as a doctrine, as a Christian doctrine, when Christianity was founded at that time, and uh, it was uh, the Jewish people who were taken to be responsible for the crucifixion of Yehoshua ben Yusuf, uh, otherwise known as Jesus Christ. Uh, previously, you know, Christianity was a sect, a Jewish sect, that extolled uh, Yehoshua ben Yusuf as a uh, messiah of one sort or another, even though he never wrote anything. And usually, you know, in Judaism, you know, like, messiahs are supposed to write something, you know, in order to make their, their thought, you know, like, um, systematic and uh, perpetual. This was not the case with, uh, with Yehoshua ben Yusuf, and that's why he was not considered to be a prophet by the uh, Judaic culture, political culture. Now, Christianity, which was established only in 326 uh, AD, or the Common Era, CE as uh, we call it, um, changed uh, the uh, nature of uh, the Jewish people to be a, um, a minority which was rejected as part of the uh, hegemonic political culture. This has persisted and was embellished in, in the, and into a uh, further stages of uh, anti-Semitism, which then became uh, the uh, Christian doctrine of Nazism. And I say Christian doctor, doctrine of, anti, of Nazism, you know, with intent, because uh, there was uh, uh, no other way to describe, you know, Nazism other than a Christian political culture and a nation state, considering that it entered into a pact with the Vatican, was launched originally, you know, by Lutheranism, which uh, denounced the uh, Jewish people for not having converted to Lutheranism in Germany uh, in uh, much, in somewhat the same way that uh, Mohammed denounced the uh, Jewish people for not having converted to uh, become Muslims under his uh, uh, messianic leadership, although Nazism, you know, which was qualitatively um, much uh, um, more seriously, you know, a uh, problem, because uh, Nazism proposed the extermination, not merely the discrimination, of the Jewish people in uh, Islam and Muslim cultures. The Jewish people were uh, relegated to a dimini status. Uh, national uh, minority of a social order codified in law for which the Jewish people had to pay a particular tax for the protection from the state and uh, excluded from the military service, that is military training, which didn't allow for Jewish self-defense, of course. Now, in uh, Nazism, the uh, social order of the Jewish people was uh, considered to be uh, something to be excluded, uh, not by transfer, not by exile, but by extermination. And Jewish people were not allowed to leave the uh, Nazi uh, nation state and were uh, 
scheduled for extermination as projected in the initial uh, book of the uh, Hitlerian regime, the Mein Kampf, was not something developed later on. It was originally postulated and in fact is a continuation of the various crusades which massacred the Jewish people of Germany and the uh, Slavic countries, you know, when the uh, crusaders uh, went on their way, you know, to uh, capture the city of Jerusalem and proclaim themselves, you know, to be the the leaders of the world, basically, as Jerusalem was considered to be the, the world center of political culture. So, there are many reasons to recognize the Jewish people as a social order, and that is why the Jewish Socialist Bund calls for national cultural autonomy, and our movement was founded in 1897 in opposition to the Zionist movement, which sought to relieve the uh, oppression of the Jewish people by uh, leaving the uh, their cultural uh, homelands, you know, of Germany, Poland, whatever, give up uh, on, on their nationality and giving up on integration, giving up on their civil rights, giving up on all of this, considering it to be an impossibility, and seeking to establish a similar nation state uh, in a uh, territory which was uh, uh, considered to be the possession of uh, the Jewish people contrary to Judea Judaism. Judaism does not consider uh, the uh, Holy Land to be the possession of the Jewish people. For instance, in the uh, Torah, what was later called the uh, Old Testament by Christianity, uh, the covenant with Abraham, you know, uh, denoted, you know, the, the uh, clan of Abraham to be welcome in the land of Canaan and that the descendants of Abraham would be welcomed there forever. Now, of course, you know, the first son of Abraham was Ishmael, who was the father of the Arabic nations, and only the second son of uh, Abraham was uh, Isaac, uh, and Isaac was later on included in this pact, you know, so that uh, both peoples were wel welcomed uh, in permanence in the land of Canaan. Later on, there's an historical account in the Torah of how, you know, this was transformed into a monarchy uh, called the Eretz Yisrael and all this, even though the name Israel is the name of the Jewish people given to uh, Jacob's son uh, uh, Joseph. And uh, this was uh, uh, not uh, to be uh, considered, you know, equivalent to the land of Canaan. And uh, there were various uh, nations that coexisted there in uh, the various uh, city-states uh, in an autonomous fashion. And in fact, uh, when even Joshua uh, went, entered into the land of Canaan, uh, supposedly with the aim of uh, conquering it. This was dropped when there was actually a peace pact established with the Hittites, which was a another of the nations living in the land of Canaan. And this peace pact allowed for the mutual coexistence of these nations within the same land. So there is no uh, historical or Judaic basis, you know, for the establishment of a nation state called. Uh, Israel, which is actually a Zionist state. And that is all that it is. So, in order to provide an alternative to Zionism, the Jewish Bundes movement called for national cultural autonomy in which the Jewish people would have their security and uh, self-reliance uh, uh, in conjunction with that of uh, other uh, peoples living within the same uh, uh, society. And so civil society becomes the dominant uh, mode of existence rather than the state. In effect, a civil society um, necessarily becomes independent of the state. And in fact, uh, it is projected by the logical conclusion of Buddhism, you know, that uh, civil society replaces the state. In order to do so, one must have a socialist revolution. In order to overcome the domination of the class, the bourgeois class, which maintains the state, the bourgeois state, as a form of domination rather than liberation. Liberalism uh, considers that it is the most advanced form of uh, political existence, you know, by postulating democracy. But the form of democracy presented by liberalism is a majoritarian domination, which uh, um, is uh, has been called in political theory the dictatorship of the of the of the majority. And uh, this was meant, you know, to dispute, you know, the right of the working class, which was majoritarian in Europe at one point, uh, uh, and uh, was uh, objected to the uh, to the domination of the proletariat, the dictatorship of the proletariat, 
because it, uh, uh, in effect, uh, abolished you know the bourgeois class, which is you know okay. However, the dictatorship of the proletariat also applies to the phenomena where the uh, Christian political culture, in its majority, considers it as the right to dominate any other, you know, minority nationality, and this is the problem. And this is uh, why the Christian uh, political culture coincides with the bourgeois nationalist uh, political culture of state domination, and which is uh, the reason why national minorities are oppressed. Now, in order to have a uh, political culture of national cultural autonomy, the social order of the Jewish people, or in uh, other cases, such as the black Americans, must be granted their national rights. In the case of the black Americans, this can even be extended into territorial rights, where there is a majority of the black Americans who live in a particular territorial region and therefore can claim to territorial autonomy as well as national cultural autonomy. Now, to talk about black Americans is sort of a, a misnomer as well because uh, Americans uh, uh, are something that uh, does not exist as a coherent and homogeneous you know, political culture because there are so many different kinds of uh, nationalities living in the United States. You know, to, to start off with, 26% of the Americans uh, are uh, Anglos, Anglo-Americans from the British uh, colonial period. 25% are uh, German immigrants who left uh, Germany to find uh, some land to own, and they came here in order to get free land that was stolen from the uh, First Nations. And uh, the German Americans left uh, Germany because of the oppressive conditions there, and because of unemployment, etc., etc. And so 25% of uh, Americans presently came from Germany, like Trump. And uh, then we get into the um, occupied territories of Mexico, which uh, contained a large, you know, uh, population of uh, originally Spanish-speaking uh, political culture, which uh, uh, were mesticized uh, with the uh, First Nations of uh, Mexico uh, to become uh, Mexicas, Mexicas, and uh, now presently forming 40% of the Californian population. So when you get real, you know, the actuality of the American political culture, you see that it's much more diversified, you know, than what it's projected to be. And there is no sort of homogeneous American, although there is a common American political culture, there are also other political cultures that exist amongst the various different nationalities. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So, in order to have national cultural autonomy, you cannot have a nation state. You know, it's a contradiction. So what do you have? How do you change the uh, country into being a uh, truly democratic country in which every particular nationality has its own democratic rights and is not taken to be you know, something subordinate you know, to the majority political culture? In order to do so, national political economy must be founded within a federated society in which all the different national political economies come together and set up their society based upon um, mutual reciprocal respect. How do you do this? Well, there is a mechanism which was part of the American sort of a revolution called the Constituent Assembly. Only there it was dominated by, well, slave owners, okay? Who non nonetheless, you know, were liberal Democrats, you know, and wanted their political independence, you know, for the sake of their own political ambitions and their economic ambitions, you know. But the mechanism, which is more important than what they were, is the constituent assembly, and it is the uh, fundamental mechanism by which any uh, revolution has succeeded in the past. In particular, the, following the American Revolution, there was the constituent assembly of the uh, French Revolution, w in which the uh, third estate, which was a, uh, a class, economic class, of uh, uh, peasants and workers, uh, to, led by the led by the middle class of uh, professionals uh, overcame the second caste, which was the clergy, and the first caste, which was the landed aristocracy. So the first two castes were um, abolished, basically, in one way or another, you know, basically by the guillotine. 
and uh, the uh, third estate uh, set up its own uh, uh, liberal democratic regime, which was dominated by the arising bourgeoisie. And so the revolution was uh, limited. And uh, even though the Jacobins, you know, took over and were starting to implement, you know, a economic order, uh, which was uh, post-feudal uh, and post-capitalist, well, not post-capitalist, but, you know, uh, surmounting capitalism or overcoming the capitalist stage by setting up, you know, a popular uh, economic order. Nonetheless, the Thermidorian reaction uh, reversed that revolution and, and made it into a, uh, a limited uh, bourgeois revolution with uh, a liberal uh, democracy as a result. So, the Paris Commune of 1871 tried to overcome this again, but it was repressed by the um, bourgeois uh, military uh, soldiers of Thiers, General Thiers, who were liberated by the, uh, the victorious uh, German regime, Prussian regime, which even offered, you know, to send its own, you know, military in into uh, France in order to uh, defeat, you know, the uh, Paris Commune. But uh, the uh, bourgeois uh, French order, you know, led by General Thiers, you know, refused, you know, such aid and overcame the Paris Commune on its own and massacred everybody. So, how do we get, you know, to a uh, socialist revolution recognizing, you know, national cultural autonomy? Using a uh, method, uh, tried and true, of a constituent assembly, well, you know, all the uh, movements, you know, have to come together to form such a united front. United Front is the, uh, the revolutionary vanguard that will establish a constituent assembly in order to codify the uh, socialist revolution in terms of um, political rights and economic rights. You know, so the economic rights of uh, workers um, would have to be uh, built into a constitution such as this and not merely leading constitution to decrypt uh, and uh, enunciate, you know, various political rights, you know, which suit, you know, the bourgeois economic order alone. So, which is uh, the case uh, of what we are doing now. United Front is what we are forming up, you know, between, uh, in our own case, you know, the Jewish, you know, National Cultural Autonomy, together with, you know, the Black National Liberation Front of uh, Black and National Cultural Territorial Autonomy, together with uh, the uh, liberation of the Mexicas, the uh, First Nations, of course, which will have to be granted preferential rights in order to resuscitate its uh, demographic order, since the uh, First Nations in the United States, you know, only comprise 1.5% of the population, because all the rest, you know, have been massacred in genocidal practices, which uh, can clearly be seen, you know, in comparison, you know, with Canada, where there was less of a genocidal practice, and uh, which the First Nations comprise 5% of the population and not 1.5% of the population. Oh, I have an order here. Let me see what I can do about this. Okay, let's continue with this. So I've gone on quite, uh, quite long enough, you know, for a simple video such as this. So, uh, uh, I think that I've covered, you know, uh, the essential features of what it means to be talking about social orders and what uh, consequential, you know, political uh, program is required in order to uh, deal with the interests of the various social orders. So, if I may, I would uh, read you excerpts from the, uh, from the chapter on... Uh, social orders, and uh, the first paragraph of the conclusion as well, in order to uh, make this m uh, much uh, more systematic elaboration. So the uh, chapter is called Cleavage Points, subtitled Social Orders in Class. So when the meat cleaver was thrown at the Capitol Police officer during the fascist insurrection of January the 6th, 2021, the point of no return was launched. While this amateur act of counter-revolution was, was directed against the state 
for the cause of opposing the temerity of holding an election to replace the chosen king of Christendom. This is the point at which it is recognized that the balance of forces has been reversed. No longer were the European Christians of German extraction, together with the Anglo-American supremacists, no longer a majority. It was evident they would never be again. Both because of immigration and the rise of educational integration, the caste order of the civil society in the United States of America was a permanent and revolutionary feature of the society to come. The driving force of national identity has exposed and countered the force of fascist repression of the African -Amer black Americans who have taken control of the public spaces of American streets together with the mobilization of such supporters from the revolutionary elements of the national minorities of the indigenous First Nations, the Mechica, and Jewish nations. With the recognition of this revolt of millions of younger generational activists of the Black Lives Matter, together with the Black Bloc and Antifa, the racist core of America came out to defend their chosen Messiah, King, and Fuhrer. The failure of this act of desperation illustrates the lack of support from amongst even the previous supporters of the Trumpist movement. The desperation has exposed the populism as the failure to answer the crises that have spawned its movement. The pathetic and yet successful coup into the Capitol building was not a force in itself, but was rather facilitated by the refusal of the military Pentagon command, which refused the positioning of the National Guard when its stated intention was a matter of common knowledge. The infiltration of the military and police forces by the fascist elements and organizations is the source of the problem. It is the state infiltrated by the fascist elements that is the source of the problem. In conclusion, I would say this is sort of a envelopment of the whole um, critique of the Bourgeois nation state, you know, that I have mentioned. And it goes like this. By conclusion of the mutual recognition of nationalities as social formations in a federation based upon reciprocities rooted in symbiotic material and social relations with multiculturalism and consensus codified in the social constitution by way of the constituent assembly of the civil society as a whole, a truly social revolution is founded. Okay, let's get on with it. Thank you very much for your attention. This is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld uh, speaking to you from Montreal, Quebec, which is a autonomous nation here in Canada, still seeking its uh, national cultural autonomy and uh, looking forward to forming a federation of nationalities not only in Canada and in the United States of America but in North America, a new North America that is beyond either Canada or the United States of America.